Spoken Word Wise as we delve deeply in the Word of God, discover what it means and how to apply it to our lives. We're continuing to talk about divine appointments, the concept uh, that God's going to bring people across our paths at various points, that sometimes God brings two people together for His purposes to be accomplished. We see another divine appointment, this time in the book of Acts, chapter 16, between the Apostle Paul and a woman, Lydia, the first known believer in the continent of Europe. An amazing reality of God loves all people and brings the good news to this woman who is worshiping him but doesn't know the full story yet. So read about this divine appointment in Acts chapter 16, verses 11 through 15. We boarded a boat at Troas and sailed straight across to the island of Samothrace, and the next day we landed at Neapolis. From there we reached Philippi, a major city of that district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath we went a little way outside the city to a river bank, where we thought people would be meeting for prayer, and we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshipped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart, and she accepted what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized, and she asked us to be her guests. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we agreed. As we begin, we believe that all scripture is God-breathed. It's inspired and it's useful for us to teach us, correct us, perhaps correct us in rebuking us in different ways, but all scripture is inspired, even the geography descriptions that so often puzzle us. Why would we need to know at the beginning of this passage that Paul was sailing here and going there? Well, it's important because the geography tells us something about God's mission. Paul, up to this point, Paul and Silas have been on the second missionary journey, and up to this point, they've remained in Asia, in the modern-day Turkey, kind of that uh, Asia Minor province of Rome, and they had been in uh, that whole area. But now they're crossing into the continent of Europe. For the first time, they'll set foot on the continent of Europe to bring the good news into Macedonia, the northern part of Greece, to the city of Philippi. And this geography was arranged by God. God had intervened and basically told them, I need you to go uh, to Macedonia to share the good news, the light of Christ, with a whole unreached area that needs the hope of Jesus Christ. So Paul and Silas and Luke, you may have noticed the pronoun changed here. We is suddenly appearing. And that's because the author of the book of Acts is now traveling with Paul and Silas. He's not relying on reports or interviews. No, now it's eyewitness accounts that Luke is now with Paul and Silas as they travel into Macedonia, as they travel to Philippi. Luke is with them. So from this uh, point on, he's able to record firsthand knowledge of what he witnessed from Paul and Silas and what God was doing. So when they get to Philippi, what's interesting is Philippi was a Roman colony city, been established first as a Roman military garrison, was on a key uh, highway in northern Macedonia, in that area, northern Greece. And it was, at first, a Roman garrison town that had grown up a, a pretty rich trade and commerce because of where it was located. There would have been a large Roman population as well as a large Greek population, but there were not a lot of Jews in this city. Now, we know that because Paul always goes to the synagogue first. His pattern in his missionary travels is to take the good news first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles, and he does that by going first to the synagogue. This city, Philippi, was not big enough, did not have enough Jewish population to have a synagogue that uh, was evident there wasn't a physical building or a gathering place where the Jews in the city would meet. There weren't enough to have a synagogue. Now, just shortly after this, he goes to Thessalonica, where there is a synagogue. There's enough of a Jewish population there to have a synagogue. But Philippi didn't have that. But Paul knows that God is preparing some people to hear the good news first. Those who were God-fearers, those who were Gentiles, who were pursuing Yahweh and interested in learning more about God, but also the few Jews that may have been in the city. There weren't enough to have a synagogue, but they're going to gather together with the God-fearers somewhere on a Sabbath. And the tradition was that if you didn't have enough population to have a synagogue, you would go outside of the city into creation, and you would meet on the bank of a river or a stream or a creek out in God's creation, out in nature. You would meet near flowing water to remind you that God is living and active, and you would have your time of worship out in the great outdoors, essentially. So Paul goes to a place outside of the city on a riverbank because he knows there'll be some faithful ones there that are meeting on the Sabbath. And sure enough, there's a group of women there who are seeking and, and praying. And Paul and the other missionaries arrive there, 
and there's a receptive audience. These, these, these faithful ones want to hear the message that they're bringing. Among them was Lydia. Lydia was a wealthy merchant woman from the city of Thyatira. That's a city in Asia Minor, in modern-day Turkey. It's actually mentioned in the letters to the churches in Revelation. You can read that in chapters 2 and 3 in the book of Revelation. It was a city that was known for its wealth and its, its merchants, especially those who sold a, 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 a colored dye, a purple dye. Lydia would have been one of those merchants. She had been dispatched from her home city of Thyatira. She was doing business in Philippi perhaps for some time, and she had grown quite wealthy and, and prominent through this work, but yet she is seeking God. It says there that she's a worshiper of God. Now, we don't know if that means she was a God-fearing Gentile woman who was seeking Yahweh and asking and, and longing to know more about God, or if she was a Jewish woman. The indication is she's probably a Gentile, a God-fearer, but we don't know that for certain. We just know that she's there that morning for this divine appointment to hear the good news from Silas and Paul and the other missionaries. And as Paul shares about Jesus, God opens her heart. Did you see how this is reported? Luke says, as she heard Paul explaining it all, as she heard Paul explaining the Old Testament and the prophecies about Jesus and the ministry and life and mission of Jesus Christ, her heart is open and she believes. She believes. She puts her faith in God. She's saved through her faith. And her and her entire household are baptized. That could have been her servants. It could have possibly been other relatives that were with her. But the entire household comes to faith and are baptized. And this amazing divine appointment was for her salvation and for God's grace to be shown to her and for her to believe. And yes, eternal reward would have been hers. But also now she gets to live with hope and joy. And notice what she does right away. She realizes God has saved me by his grace. God has saved me. Jesus has done this mighty work, and I need to respond to it. And I've been given great, great success, great blessing, great wealth. I've been given these blessings, perhaps to use for God's service. So immediately, she offers to Paul and Silas and other missionaries, she wants them to come and be her guests. That doesn't mean just coming over for dinner. That would have been good enough if she's offering some um, uh, hospitality, a meal. No, she's saying, come and stay. Let me provide for your room, your board, your shelter, your food. Let me use all of my resources to fund your stay here in Philippi. All of the missionaries. Come and be my guests means not just for a meal, but to stay and to let me provide for you while you're here. And so that you can be free to share the good news undistracted by anything else. So in other words, she's wanting to use what God has given her, her resources, to bless and provide for God's workers, God's missionaries. So at first you notice there's a, perhaps a little bit of resistance. Paul and Silas and the others, they may not uh, realize, but they don't necessarily want to stay in the home of a Gentile woman. That's still something that may be a little difficult for them. And she has to push through that and say, okay, do you truly believe that God has saved me by his grace? Do you truly believe that I'm now a follower of Jesus? If so, then we're equals, we're co-heirs of the kingdom, we're brothers and sisters together. So let me use my resources to provide. Let me use my resources to help you. And I love the fact that she urges them and they accept her hospitality. Paul probably understands that God has arranged this divine appointment, yes, for Lydia's salvation, for Lydia's blessing, for the household to be saved, but even more so for him to be provided for, for Silas and Paul and other missionaries to be cared for and provided for while they're in Philippi. So Lydia is able to give back to God's work right away and uses what she's been given to bless this mission. Now, Paul and, and Silas will not be long in Philippi, but they will have a huge impact. Their work will found a church that later Paul will write a letter to. The letter to the Philippians is written to this group of believers that started with Lydia, the first believer that we know of in Europe in this story. And it probably grew fairly quickly as other believers came to know Jesus in that city. And it became a pretty spectacular place where God was at work. And all of it began a little divine appointment between Lydia and Paul. So brothers and sisters, never think that God is uh, going to overlook you. You are uh, important to God. Regardless of who you are or where you are, God loves you and wants to reach out to you to help you and to bring you to know Him. And then when you know Jesus, respond by giving back to God all that you have for his work and purposes. And as we journey on together, let us commit ourselves to becoming more word wise. Thanks for joining us, everyone.